This story unveils the mysteries and suspense within the abandoned warehouse. Listen until the end, and if you enjoy it, share it with your friends and subscribe by pressing the bell icon. Thank you for listening, let's start. Rain lashed against the grimy windowpane, blurring the neon glow of the city outside. The rhythmic drumming was the only soundtrack to my frantic thoughts. I clutched the worn photograph, its edges softened from years of being held too tightly. Her smile, once vibrant, seemed to mock me from the faded paper, find him, Evelyn, her voice echoed in my head, a whisper from a memory long gone, Evelyn Thorne, my sister, had vanished without a trace two years ago. The police called it a runaway case, a flimsy explanation that never sat right with me. I knew her, her dreams, her fears. Running away wasn't in her vocabulary, tonight, I was closer than ever to the truth. A cryptic message, delivered through a shadowy figure in a dingy bar, had led me here, to this abandoned warehouse on the city's forgotten edge. The air hung heavy with the smell of dust and decay, and every creak of the floorboard sent shivers down my spine. My heart hammered against my ribs as I crept deeper into the labyrinthine building. Flashlight beams danced across peeling paint and shattered windows, revealing nothing but emptiness. Just as doubt began to gnaw at my resolve, a faint metallic glint caught my eye, tucked away in a forgotten corner, a single, ornate music box lay nestled amidst the debris. Its intricate carvings whispered of a bygone era, and a sense of foreboding washed over me. Hesitantly, I wound the key, the melody that emerged hauntingly familiar, as the final notes faded, a hidden compartment sprang open, revealing a single sheet of paper. It was a crudely drawn map, its destination marked with a single, ominous skull. My breath hitched in my throat. This wasn't just a missing person case anymore. This was something far more sinister. With newfound determination, I pocketed the map, the rain outside suddenly a welcome counterpoint to the chilling revelation within. The hunt for Evelyn had taken a dark turn, leading me down a path fraught with danger. But I wouldn't turn back. Not until I had answers, the question now hung heavy in the air, a question only the shadows could answer, who took Evelyn, and what secrets lie buried at the skull's mark, the map led me through a maze of deserted alleyways and forgotten streets, each step echoing with the hollowness of my own unease. The rain had stopped, leaving an oppressive silence punctuated only by the distant wail of a siren. Finally, I reached the marked location, a crumbling, gothic mansion shrouded in an aura of decay. My flashlight beam sliced through the overgrown vegetation as I navigated the overgrown path leading to the mansion's dilapidated front door. A shiver ran down my spine as I noticed the boarded up windows, each one like a blind eye staring back at me. With a deep breath, I pried open a loose board, squeezing through the narrow opening into the inky blackness within, the air inside was thick with dust and the stench of damp earth. Cobwebs draped from the high ceilings, and the only light filtered through the cracks in the boarded windows, casting long, distorted shadows that danced on the peeling wallpaper. The silence was broken only by the creak of my own footsteps on the warped floorboards. As I ventured deeper, the air grew colder, and a faint, rhythmic dripping echoed from somewhere deeper in the house. My heart hammered against my ribs, a drum beat against the oppressive silence. Suddenly, a floorboard gave way beneath my foot, sending me tumbling down into a hidden cellar. I landed hard on the cold, damp earth, my breath catching in my throat. The air in the cellar was thick and stagnant, the only light flickering from a single, sputtering lantern hanging from a rusty hook. My eyes scanned the dimly lit space, taking in the scene before me, in the center of the room stood an ornate metal cage, its bars casting grotesque shadows on the surrounding walls. Inside the cage, huddled in a corner, was a figure. My breath hitched in my throat. It was her. Evelyn, but as I rushed towards the cage, a chilling voice echoed from the darkness beyond the lantern's reach. Leaving so soon, Evelyn. A figure emerged from the shadows, its face obscured by the darkness. In its hand. It held a glinting knife. Who are you? I demanded, my voice trembling. The figure chuckled, a cold, humorless sound. Someone who knows the truth about your sister. 
I lunged towards the cage, but the figure was faster. It grabbed Evelyn, dragging her out of the light and deeper into the darkness. Let her go. I screamed, my voice echoing in the cavernous space, the figure paused, its silhouette framed by the flickering lantern light. If you want to see your sister again, it rasped, you'll have to follow me, with that, the figure vanished into the shadows, taking Evelyn with it. I was left alone in the cold, damp cellar, the silence broken only by the frantic pounding of my heart. The only clue to their whereabouts, a single, blood-stained feather lying on the dusty floor, who was this mysterious figure? What secrets did they hold? And would I ever be able to bring my sister home? The questions swirled in my mind, unanswered and terrifying. As I stared into the darkness where they had disappeared, I knew one thing for certain, this was just the beginning. The feather, a stark crimson against the grimy floor, seemed to mock me with its silence. It was a raven's feather, an ominous symbol that sent shivers down my spine. Following the figure's command, I plunged deeper into the labyrinthine cellar, the lantern's weak glow barely penetrating the oppressive darkness. The air grew colder, the silence broken only by the dripping of unseen water and the frantic pounding of my own heart. Each twist and turn revealed another dusty relic, another unsettling detail, a child's forgotten doll, a tarnished mirror reflecting my own distorted image, a cobweb-draped portrait with eyes that seemed to follow my every move. Then, a faint sound reached my ears, a muffled whimper, barely audible over the dripping water. Hope surged through me, and I quickened my pace, following the sound like a beacon in the dark. The sound led me to a hidden passage, a narrow opening barely wide enough for a single person to squeeze through. With a deep breath, I pushed myself through the opening, emerging into a cavernous chamber illuminated by a single flickering torch. In the center of the chamber stood a stone altar, adorned with strange symbols and macabre offerings. And there, chained to the altar, was Evelyn. Her face was pale and drawn, but her eyes, filled with a mixture of fear and defiance, met mine, relief washed over me, momentarily eclipsing the chilling scene around me. But before I could reach her, a figure emerged from the shadows behind the altar. Tall and cloaked, their face hidden in the darkness, they held a wicked-looking dagger pointed at Evelyn's throat, one step closer, the figure rasped, their voice distorted by the echoing chamber, and she dies. Panic clawed at my throat. I had to think fast. My eyes darted around the chamber, searching for anything that could help me. My gaze fell on a heavy stone slab leaning against the wall. It was my only chance, who are you? I demanded, my voice surprisingly steady. Why are you doing this? The figure chuckled, a cold, hollow sound. Justice, they declared, their voice laced with a chilling conviction. Justice for what has been lost, their words sparked a flicker of recognition in my memory. The cryptic message, the music box, the map, they all pointed to a past I barely knew, a family secret buried deep within the Thorn family history. Before I could press further, the figure spoke again, their voice laced with urgency. You have a choice, Evelyn's sister. You can either join her fate, or fulfill the true purpose of your arrival. They gestured towards a dusty tome lying open on the altar, its pages filled with arcane symbols and cryptic script. My heart hammered against my ribs. What did they mean? What was the true purpose they spoke of, as I stared at the open book, a thousand questions swirled in my mind. Was this figure a villain or a misguided soul seeking their own twisted form of justice? Was the price of saving Evelyn more than I was willing to pay, the figure's dagger twitched closer to Evelyn's throat, the point drawing a bead of blood. Time seemed to stand still. In that moment, I knew the decision I had to make, a choice that would forever alter the course of my life and the fate of my sister. The air hung heavy with the metallic tang of blood and the unsettling silence broken only by the ragged gasps of my sister. My hand instinctively reached for the heavy stone slab, the weight a grounding force against the whirlwind of emotions swirling within me. Justice? I echoed, my voice hoarse. What justice justifies holding my sister captive, threatening her life, the figure remained shrouded in shadows, their voice a chilling whisper. The justice stolen from those who suffered in silence. The justice denied for generations, 
their words resonated deep within me, stirring a long dormant curiosity about the skeletons hidden in the Thorn family closet. But the figure's twisted sense of justice couldn't justify the terror they inflicted. There's another way, I pleaded, my voice gaining strength. Tell me what you want. What truth do you seek? We can find it together, without bloodshed, a tense silence stretched between us, broken only by the flickering torch casting grotesque shadows on the stone walls. The figure seemed to consider my offer, their form shifting in the flickering light. Suddenly, a guttural growl echoed from the darkness beyond the altar. A monstrous shape, its eyes glowing embers in the gloom, lunged towards the figure. In the ensuing chaos, the figure stumbled, momentarily distracted, seizing the opportunity, I hurled the stone slab with all my might. It connected with a sickening thud, sending the figure crashing to the ground. With a surge of adrenaline, I rushed towards Evelyn, fumbling with the chains that bound her, run. I shouted, shoving the dagger the figure dropped into her hand, Evelyn hesitated, her gaze flickering between me and the fallen figure. What about you, she whispered, her voice trembling, go. I urged, desperation lacing my voice. I'll hold them off, with a final look of fear and determination, Evelyn turned and fled into the darkness of the hidden passage. I spun around, bracing myself for the figure's inevitable retaliation. But the figure remained motionless, their form obscured by the shadows. A low, guttural growl rose from the darkness beyond, growing louder with each passing moment. The monstrous creature, its eyes fixated on me, let out a blood-curdling roar. As I faced the approaching monstrosity, the weight of my decision settled upon me. Had I condemned myself to save my sister? Or had I merely unleashed a greater evil upon the world, the creature lunged, a blur of fangs and claws. I barely dodged, the stench of damp earth and decay washing over me. Adrenaline coursed through my veins, fueling my desperate scramble back towards the hidden passage, but the creature was relentless. It blocked my escape, its eyes burning with an unnatural hunger. Panic threatened to consume me, but a flicker of movement in the corner of my eye gave me a glimmer of hope. The figure, seemingly recovered from the blow, stood amidst the shadows, the monstrous creature momentarily distracted. In their hand, they clutched a small, intricately carved amulet, its surface glowing with an otherworldly light. With a guttural chant, the figure raised the amulet, its voice echoing through the chamber. The air crackled with unseen energy, and the creature recoiled, whimpering in fear. The glow from the amulet intensified, bathing the chamber in an ethereal light. Suddenly, the ground beneath the creature began to tremble. Cracks snaked across the stone floor, widening rapidly. The creature let out a terrified shriek as the earth gave way, swallowing it whole into a bottomless abyss. The silence that followed was deafening. D figure lowered the amulet, its light fading, revealing their face for the first time. It was an old woman, her eyes filled with a mixture of exhaustion and relief. It is done, she rasped, her voice weak, D darkness has been banished, for now. Before I could question her further, the woman collapsed, the amulet clattering to the ground beside her. I rushed to her side, checking for a pulse. She was alive, but barely, who are you? I whispered, urgency lacing my voice. What have you done? The woman's eyes fluttered open, her gaze meeting mine. I am the last guardian, she croaked, her voice barely audible. And you, you are the key, with a final, labored breath, the woman's eyes closed. Her grip on the amulet loosened, and it rolled towards me, pulsing with a faint, ethereal light, I stared at the amulet, its significance heavy in the air. The woman's words echoed in my mind, leaving more questions than answers. Who was the key? What darkness had she banished? And what role did I play in it all, as I knelt beside the fallen guardian, the weight of the amulet in my hand felt like the weight of a destiny I never asked for. The chamber remained silent, save for the faint dripping of water and the distant echo of my own pounding heart. The story ends here, providing a sense of closure while leaving room for interpretation and further exploration. The audience is left to ponder the protagonist's newfound responsibility, the lingering mystery of the amulet and its purpose, and the potential consequences of the events that transpired within the hidden chamber. 
This ending leaves a lasting impression and invites the audience to imagine the protagonist's future and the potential dangers and revelations that await them.